it all during that the works of the old masters and ancient craftsmen of Japan are not merely relics of the past. They are part of a culture that is very much alive and which remains to the modern Japanese a pillar of strength and discipline and a living source of joy. All over Japan, local festivals remind everybody, at least once each year, the importance of their ancient heritage. Because the past is as much a part of everyday life as the weather, every boy and girl in Japan faces the same challenge. How can I live by the spiritual teachings of my forefathers in the harsh modern light of the 20th century? Western ways of seeing things and selling them affect everybody. From the boy who watches the cowboys at the matinee to the man who advertises a sort of Japanese Turkish bath. But the future of the people of Japan depends on other things. It depends on economics on how they get the steel that makes modern wheels go round, and how they fill their stores with food to eat and clothes to wear. These are the mountains that crowd Japan. Because of these mountains, there is very little land on which crops can be grown. Japan is about the size of California, but 90 million people well over half the population of the United States are crowded into this area. Nearly half of these people are farmers who devote their lives to small plots of only two or three acres. All of the cultivated land of this entire village of 150 people is just 90 acres, the size of an average American farm. It is good land and the harvest is rich this year. But the size of their harvest is not the only source of joy to the old people who winnow the grain. More important than the amount of rice is the fact that under Japan's new land reform, all of the crop actually belongs to these farmers. The ceremony is ancient and the mutual respect which the farmers and the women of the house feel for each other have been stylized during centuries of isolation into a politeness which is almost a way of life. But though the forms are the same as ever, much else has changed. Today, these villagers own the land they farm and they speak not as servants to a lord, but as equals, free to disagree with one another. The handbills describe various tractors, and they are trying to decide which one to buy for their community of tiny farms. It is an important decision. They can afford to buy only one. It is a new experience for this village, buying things jointly and deciding things together. In their way, it is a kind of town hall democracy. But it is difficult too, and the farmers who are cautious and shrewd have many salesmen come to show their wares. Sometimes the salesmen are persuaded to give free demonstrations, plowing many acres before the farmers actually buy.
in the nearby monastery of Kokubunji, the youngest children of the village gather daily for a nursery school. For to every Japanese parent, education is of the utmost importance. Families who prepare for the rice festival, which is their Thanksgiving holiday, are as shrewd about values as about prices. To them, a house is a work of art, kept spotlessly clean, a symbol that the family is a man's most precious rallying point and his best window on the world. Sliding panels, called shoji, are made of paper and wood. But tomorrow, when the rice festival comes, they will, in a sense, be stronger than many Western walls because they will hold a family more tightly together. Rice is the main dish of the Thanksgiving feast, which relatives in their Sunday best have come from afar to share. who give thanks today for their rice harvest don't grow enough to feed all Japan. And each year the situation becomes more difficult with the population increasing at the rate of one million annually. What can they do? There simply isn't enough land. They must import much grain and as always turn to the sea for food. They build a fishing boat in the old way. To cut a single plank takes a whole day. Tomorrow he will cut a second one. The day after he will cut a third. And each day he earns enough for his three meals and very little more. The men who sit upon the ancient beaches, where their ancestors have worked for centuries, know one of Japan's main economic problems at first hand. For they know that when grandfather was young, he caught twice as many fish as he does now, using the same nets in the same waters. As they dry their nets, their more adventurous brothers and cousins are at this moment far away catching tuna and swordfish and crab by the ton. They range far and wide over the Pacific. Fishing in the coastal waters begins early each day. It must, for the fishermen of Japan have 90 million mouths to feed. The latest electronic equipment is used to locate fish by sounding out the waters. Sometimes the sonar finds nothing under the surface for days.
when at last the sonar does find a school of fish, the good news spreads across and the nets are lowered. time it looks like a good catch. It is a good catch. Where there are no harbors, boats are beached in the old-fashioned way. With the help of the women, many of these boats are owned cooperatively by an entire fishing village. What's hard work for strong bodies might be made easy by a machine, but machines are costly and labor is plentiful. <laughs> 